Thanks. So, hello there. Uh, sorry, uh, it's hard to compete with a Mannschaft playing very soon. So, we're happy that you are here. Thank you for coming. So, we are a. Um, just going to introduce myself quickly. So, I am, I'm uh, Laurent, the, the, I'm a nomadic CEO, um, uh, entrepreneur. I founded uh, three years ago uh, Wizzy. And before, since 2006, I'm working fully in uh, an Android and uh, in the Google ecosystem. I'm here with uh, uh, Jeremy, a CTO, uh, was since three years with us at, at Wizzy. So uh, the idea today is to share with you uh, our experience, a success story as a low-cost, customer-driven, and co-developed uh, EMM. So let's start. I'm going to uh, edit a little bit the story in the beginning for the first 10 minutes to make it a bit more interesting. So I started in a, on a beach in Australia with my wife. You can see me here. Or uh, in a house, it's a real picture, uh, speaking to the, to the birds. Uh, I was resting there after selling my company in France uh, two years before. Uh, well, I got a phone call <coughs> from uh, one of my previous customers, CIO of a, of a courier company in France, who told me, Guy, I need you. You should, <coughs> you should come back to France, you know, where people are demonstrating, where you have traffic jams, where, uh, but basically we eat well. Uh, because I, I need you, I have an issue. I have changing my fleet of uh, device from uh, Microsoft C to, uh, to Android. I have the application, I have the Zebra devices. Uh, everything is there. I need to deploy in like uh, eight to 10 months, but I have no MDM. And in fact, I have been uh, looking at the market. My experts have been looking at the markets. And they came back to me with, uh, uh, with uh, basically solutions, solutions which are complex, uh, which are slow to deploy, uh, which are, we need experts to deploy them, and usually pretty expensive. So that's, that's not what I'm looking for. Okay? I'm looking for a solution which is uh, simple, easy to use, that I can deploy fast, not losing time on techni techni technicalities, which is uh, made for knobs, or basically for people, uh, uh, like I like to say, idiot-proof, you know, for people who are not specifically technical, uh, specifically like manager of uh, depot centers, you know, managing drivers. They need to be able to onboard phones. They need to be able, you know, to, uh, to, uh, to block them, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, of course, not expensive. Okay, so this doesn't fit. What I have right now in the market doesn't, doesn't fit. So are you ready for the challenge? So I was sitting on my, on my beach. And I thought, should I go, should I do, uh, what should I do? Should I go for it, or should I, uh, should I uh, stay on my beach so in Australia? So I called Jeremy, and I said, Jeremy, are you up to the challenge? Yeah, and sure. Sure? So we decided to go, to go for the challenge. And I came back to France, and uh, we started to deploy, uh, to work on this, uh, on this project. So first thing, uh, hey, Henry, the, is it feasible in 10 months? Because in fact, we didn't have really we had a team, an expert team in, uh, in uh, Google Cloud Technologies, also some Android development, but we, didn't have, we had zero experience in EMM at the beginning. So, so we needed you know, to employ some people doing this. So first, is it possible? Let's start to do a, a proof of concept. So we, we, connect, we contacted with experts in the field. And uh, of course, first experts told us, basically, don't go there. Nothing to see. It's not for you. Okay? You are like, too young, too uh, inexperienced, etc. So the people who accepted to speak to us basically told us, uh, you are totally nuts okay, to try to do this. It's going to take uh, three years, uh, five million dollars investment to do this. So you're going, you're, going, you're going basically to fail. But luckily, we contacted Android Enterprise uh, with our customer, which was already a, a, a customer of uh, Google. Uh, in fact, a um, previous company I founded in Paris was the first G Suite reseller historically in Europe. So I knew some people at, at uh, Google and Android, and uh, my customer also, uh, my ex-customer knew some people. So we went there, we discovered, we discovered what, uh, what Android Enterprise was doing, and we said, okay, it's, uh, it's possible. Ten months later, which is August last year, we deployed uh, 6,000 uh, devices, uh, Zebra devices, uh, in a three-week period. Uh, for our customer, and in fact, this video is, uh, is one of the customer testimonial on the Android Enterprise main website page, so you can check the video. Sorry, it's in French, but you can check it. Uh, and three months later, <coughs> sorry, three months later, uh, we, um, yeah, we, we uh, listed 
the or public version of the of the EMM on uh, on the Android uh, solution directory. So that's in short the the story the storyline uh, the 18 month storyline uh, 18 months ago, and in fact I'm I'm, I'm leaving for Australia again in, in next week to spend to spend two months there because I'm missing it, but I was full time here working on this project since. So to be more serious now, what challenge did we face uh, doing this? We, f we, we faced some functional challenge and some technical challenge. So let's, let's speak about these challenges. So first functional challenge. And challenge. Make it easy to, to use, like uh, what I said, idiot proof. Make it easy to use for IT users, of course, IT admins centrally to deploy, but also for local business managers. Okay, the, the web console <coughs> interface should be used by non-technical people, by people you know who manage drivers, you know who manage packets, delivery, etc. And uh, we have no, we don't need to be trained uh, to use uh, a, 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 an application like this. Second challenge was very important, aligned to the business needs. Okay, set up alerts that matters to the business. Because it's very well to be secure, et cetera, et cetera. But if you don't have the right information at the right time to manage your business, you're, you're not good. You're not better than the others. Okay? So the, one of the big subjects we had is how do we uh, bring back all the information needed in order to set up the appropriate alerts for their business. The second is anticipate. The beauty of the cloud solution, because you'll see, of course, the solution is SaaS cloud, okay, with, with the history we have, uh, is that we keep all we keep all the logs of everything on, uh, for all the actions on the device on BigQuery, on, the, on GCP. So we have all the logs. We can do predictive analytics. We can use TensorFlow to do machine learning later on, so after a certain amount of time. So right now, we are at this time we discussed uh, where we can start to do this. Okay? So predictive analytics is something which will bring a high value to our customer. And then uh, cover end-to-end -end business needs. And for this customer, one of the business needs that many, many customers using fleet of devices here have is uh, uh, cover the full fleet lifecycle management. You know, to know where is my device? Is my device uh, operating currently? Is it in stock ready to operate? Or is it uh, in maintenance somewhere, repair, et cetera, et cetera. So we, we include this in, a, in, a, in the application to cover all the business needs. And finally, align with major Google Android features. So this is the same story as I had with Google Cloud in the beginning, is that you know, people say, yeah, but Google, Android wants me to do this way, that way, I don't want to do it, I want to do it another way. Okay, so, but what does it take for you to change a little bit how you want to work and have a much higher value after? One example I like to give is the example of an uh, English customer where we did a proof of concept. He had his uh, own app, uh, and uh, but he didn't want to load it on the, on the Google Play Store, private app on the Google Play Store. He said, that's, I want to, you know, it's too dangerous, it's at Google, on Google Play Store, etc. I want just to, you know, just to publish it from my own servers. Okay? So we convinced him for the POC to do it. He uploaded the application. Jeremy did it. He was live there doing it. You know, they did it. And in fact, through Google Play Protect, they discovered that they had trackers installed on the new application, that most of the development was, uh, was outsourced. So they discovered advertising trackers on the main business app they were going to deploy. Okay, and the guy, they looked at us, they looked at the developer, and you can see, you know, uh, the, in his eyes, we can see, you know, he was angry <laughs> with his developers. But that's one of the things. So you need to, basically, to align what you can get out of what Android and, and Google does. Okay, and you can get a lot, a full lot out of it. So that, that said, now we go in uh, technical challenges, and that's for CTO. Thank you, Laurent. So I'll come back on some of the technical challenges we faced during this project. So as a big of context, the project, the project consists in manage remotely 6,000 devices. Okay. So speaking about enterprise mobile management, uh, the first thing we have to ensure is the device security. That was one of the big challenge. Okay. Uh, make sure that we push the right restriction, make sure that we also consider user experience because you more, the more restriction you push, the more you have to deal with user experience. Data encryption, data synchronization, make sure that all the data is encrypted, make sure that all the devices are synchronized with the, the backend. Communication is obviously one of the biggest challenge because you have to communicate with a large fleet of connected devices. For those who do IoT or Android of Things, you, you understand what I mean. So communication has to be, has to be real time, but has to be also cost efficient. 
scalability, reliability, performance. Okay, I'm not talking about a B2C uh, applications with billions of users. That's right. But still, we are facing some um, data volume scale that we have to handle properly. So first of all, we generate around three gigabytes of data every day, you know, among other things, logs and data history. So we have to store that in big data table uh, properly. Uh, we have long jobs, um, back, back office data processing. Storing the data is great, but you have to process them. And lately, 6,000 devices connected to a backend represent roughly 50 requests per second. So it's not that high, but uh, still, you have to set this up correctly, manage instances, and mostly make sure you propose the good ratio between performance and cost. Analytics, uh, one of the key things of this project is the data. So storing the data is great now. You have to propose uh, great uh, reports, KPI to be very pushy to the customer, propose to him the best um, view of what happened through the data for him to take the better decisions. And eventually limit the cost. We are talking about cloud infrastructure, performance versus cost, that's always the same motto. So. Limit the cost is one of the key things, especially once you go live, but also when you define the architecture. That being said, between you and me, I will say that that are not real technical challenges. This is basics. If you want to go, if you want to afford such a project, such project, you have to consider these not as technical challenges, but as basics. When you create an application on the Google Cloud Platform, when you speak about a device security, there are frameworks, existing frameworks you should use as bricks, as basics, to build the entire project. So that definitely, and because we have a lot of experience as developers, as certified developer on the Google Cloud Platform, that definitely just basics. And if you follow me on the social network, um, you will see that I like the motto, if you want to play in Premiership, you better master the basics, the basics. And that this is definitely what happened and what, one of the key success of this project. So due to new technology, due to the work of Google, uh, both on the Google Cloud Platform side and Android Enterprise, we can work very efficiently on those topics. So security, scalability, and performance, we just play with the frameworks and the API proposed and the managed services proposed by Google and the Android team, okay? The real challenge is master the basics and then face the real technical challenges, which are stay aligned with Android disruption. So when we start the project, the true story, uh, because of customer history, we start with Android open source, AOSP, and after a while, and maybe also because Android team was very pushy about this project. We make a switch to Android GMS, so we start over uh, with a new approach, device ownership, new API, new framework. So that's something you have to understand when you use such a technology, be able to flip and uh, change strategy, technical strategy. So you have to handle with new services, complex documentation, well documentation, but still complex, and that documentation evolves through the project. So uh, my job consists in reading over and over the same documentation, make sure that I um, stay updated with the, the last information. Uh, also, one of the challenge you, as a technical guy, you can miss is stay connected with the Android tech team and the manufacturer. You have to be a player of the community, give feedback, raise issue, answer issue of other guys, because the more you provide, the more you get. If you want to stay updated with uh, those new technology, you have to provide feedback. And because sometimes the API is not working, because sometimes there is some issues, because sometimes you are facing something that nobody faced before, even the Android team. So that's very important to provide feedback for them to do a better job, provide uh, uh, patch, correction, fixes, improvements, and also get answers from the other developers. Um, I know this is an Android uh, event, or 
that spirit of sharing is very Android, I think. On the Android enterprise side, it's not different. You have to keep that in mind. Last point, which is very important, the long-term view of Android or cloud platform is not always aligned with the day-to-day -day issues you face uh, during the project. And that's very important to understand that, to stay connected, to understand where they go, to provide the correct answer, I mean, to provide all the information to, the, uh, to your customer for him to take the right decision. So sometimes we, we get challenged by the customer saying, hey, we want this and this. Yeah, okay, maybe if you wait a little bit, it will come up on the framework, or maybe if you change a little bit your mind, if you change your approach, it could match. Okay, that's, that's true on the functional level, and that's also true on the technical level. Last thing, uh, optimal cloud architecture. So we chose um, to build the entire solution on the Google Cloud Platform, which really helped us. Uh, we spare a lot of time by not thinking about performance, by not thinking about load balancing and uh, how to manage instances, etc. We just write, uh, we just think about the right architecture. Thanks, I mean, a huge experience. Once we have that, this is the basics I talk, I talk about. You need to set the right architecture to make sure you will handle the traffic, you will handle all the specificities of your project. Once you have all of that, you can focus on the very one point, which is stick to your customer needs. So, I mean, in my opinion, velocity and agility is, are the two criteria you have to keep in mind. Because the specifications change so many times during the project. Because, you know, this guy, they have a job, they are operational. So, they are thinking over and over about the process and they are improving it uh, during your development. So, if you are not comfortable enough with the basics, with the frameworks offered by Google and Android, you cannot be, uh, you cannot have this high velocity and high agility required with such a project. Just to highlight a little bit the, the history of the project, we start uh, in October 2016 by the proof of concept, making sure that the technology is able to take control over the device remotely. Start the project December 2016, start over in March 2017 due to a flip from AOSP to GMS. And by the way, so we choose device ownership and by the way, we use also Firebase cloud messaging as the communication system. Start over, deliver the solution four months later in uh, July. Uh, one month testing, go live in August and we enroll uh, 4, 5,000 devices in uh, three weeks. Um, App Engine run, run very well. It was great to see that. Uh, second version, obviously, in October 2000, 2017, and eventually <coughs> we released the public version and get the Android Enterprise Partnership in January 2018. For, for, so for those developers, as a conclusion, for those developers who worked on such a project, that's a very short period of time. Yeah. Thank you. So yeah, I like about the scalability. I like to also to tell the story of a customer when you know we had developed with 200 devices plugged. You know, I was working. I said, but can you prove it's going to work with 10,000 devices? When we had no, we had no doubt because it was plugged to GCP. So we still emulated it, put 10,000 devices, and it worked. So, but the question was here. You know, is it going to work with a high load? When you work really on real cloud solutions, uh, it's no issue. There is no issue about the. Uh, but the scalability. So, what lessons have we learned? Uh, was it easy? No, hell no, it was not easy. No, it was like pretty difficult to do. Uh, it was a damn difficult job. But we succeeded because we had three things. Uh, we had first uh, a customer committed to co-develop with us. Okay, so that's that's one the first very important thing. We had a use case and a customer. The second, we had uh, the Android partnership. So the, the a close collaboration to Android uh, Android Enterprise. Uh, uh, the people, the tool set, the smart APIs, and I want to thank the people here, if people have people here from, from Android, about the help they've provided. Uh, and we had time and resources. We had one year work with a skilled team of 10 people, because we employed people skilled in this, you know, after, after we faced the, the first challenge. Uh, so that's, that's, that's why we made it a success. And uh, the second lesson learned is, and that's really important, and that, that goes more to the functional business side, but what's the real value? 
I mean, again, I'm oversimplifying a bit because I'm not, I'm not I'm a CPA by training, by the way. So I'm not a, I'm not an engineer. So so it's easy for me to simplify the, the technical side, and I have a great guy, you know, who does the job here. So so that's all good. Uh, uh, but for the customer, I mean, today everything which is uh, 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 like the the security, the app store, all these things is, is is given by Android. You know, you just plug. Okay, you have to plug, and it's given. You don't have to spend time and resources and make sure it works. Can you imagine redevelop Google Play Protect? It's impossible. Okay, so so you just use what what Google uh, what Android is providing, and 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 you immediately you can work at the level which is important for the customer, which is the business value. And where comes the business value from? Business value comes from data. Okay, we all know it. Everybody speaks only about data. Uh, so data for what? Data to uh, to have uh, the, the the alerts at the right time inside uh, inside your business process. Uh, uh, data to do cost savings. So, for example, we can bring back all the detail of the, co the call logs, the, the you know the data logs from the from the phone, phones directly on a console, okay? Which uh, all the other EMM you have to 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 call the the, the telco to have the information. Yes, you don't have it on uh, you know, immediately. So, data is key, uh, and of course, AI ready. As I discussed before, predictive analytics. You know, if you have a large fleet, you should be able to understand your data, to do prediction, to apply machine learning. It's a must-have in the in the future. Okay, or you cannot do it the first month you deploy. You need, of course, a certain set of data. But it's a must have. So we focus on all these things. Okay, that's a real focus for our customers. And of course, easy to set up and to run. That, you know, that's the basic. Uh, I like to compare to, I'm not going to, I know you're in Germany, but SAP, you know, you want to use SAP, you need to be trained. Okay, uh, you want to use uh, a, 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 the, the, the more, more modern accounting software online. You don't really need training. It's a bit like more, you know, uh, more user friendly. It's a bit the same thing uh, for us. So uh, quickly, I want to go through the five uh, uh, best practices for the successful deployment of a large amount of device in a in a short period. That's not only about us. It's a bit, the, you know, the, the experience uh, we have uh, we have lived. Uh, so that's uh, first one is uh, choose the best trade-off between speed, cost, business impact, and uh, deployment setup. Take an MSP, managed service providers. The quicker you go, the less it costs you per device because they put a team on it and it's finished. You use your people internally, okay? Then you would put two, three people. You can do it month by month, a little bit each month, okay? It'd be more cost-efficient for you. But you have to adjust uh, the business impact, you know, when you do it, etc. So that's that's the first thing to 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 set up straight. Then, a very important, select your hardware and Android version based on your apps and process requirements. Don't do the reverse. We have seen people who have been choosing, oh, I like this Android device from this manufacturer because it's very cost efficient, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? And, uh, and, then, uh, and then some end up with an AUSP uh, uh, device, which is, which is not GMS, so you cannot use it with Android Enterprise, by the way. Uh, so uh, so it, uh, it doesn't fit, you know, the application wants to do something to the device which is not possible. So that's really also the first really an important point. Third one, test on a pilot size to optimize the, the deployment process. Real site with 200 people, like this case, it was a, a depot, delivery depot with 200 drivers. They were full, you know, fully equipped. So we did the full deployment, the full test, and then we had, you know, we had a, smooth, a, a, a smooth process for the other, for the other uh, depot. Uh, then go SaaS cloud to avoid scalability issues. I think you have understood it. We're on GCP. We, we told you 50 times already. But I mean, that's, you know, like today, you, you, you develop, a, you develop a, a, an application on the cloud like you don't, put, you don't develop, an, you don't create a new car which is not at least hybrid. Okay, the same thing. There is not even a question. In order to do this, of course, you need to anticipate the network and Wi-Fi load. So you need to anticipate before to have all your, the, all your, your where people work, you know, you have the right Wi-Fi in it, etc., to be able to, to carry the load of the application. So that was the five best practices. To finish, um, this is a bit, uh, bit crammed together. So, oh, sorry, we go, go like this. Huh? It, will be, it will be easier to read. Uh, so, the, uh, uh, so remember how Google disrupted uh, Microsoft business when they created G Suite, you know, Gmail on the cloud, etc. When nobody believed it could go somewhere, I had customer in front of me who said, you know, going the cloud, you're going to imagine putting my, my, my email on the cloud doesn't make sense. It's much more secure internally. Okay, uh, until uh, uh, the, the, the guys in, uh, in San Francisco, in, in, in LA, you know, the, oh, it was like a, a movie Hollywood thing. They had all the email out, you know, of all, with, with all the stars. And they said, oh, we should go cloud, it's more secure. 
Okay, and now there is no question anymore. Even Airbus has been going uh, G Suite or cloud recently, and Microsoft has a cloud offering now, and is, is a leader also in a cloud uh, in a, in a cloud infrastructure. So, so Microsoft, uh, Google was a bit in advance, pushed the order to go, and I believe that uh, Android Enterprise is doing the same thing uh, currently, and is disrupting the enterprise mobility segment by setting new standards for enter Android Enterprise GMS. So we go for, total, for totally open source to something like more, you know, if you want to enjoy uh, uh, the security, the Play Store, blah, 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 go GMS. Okay, and they, and they bring together the OEM, the EM player, everybody around the same, uh, the same standards. Uh, but they take care, Android takes care then of the security and the application store. So it's pretty easy once you've done this. You can focus on the, bi on the business process, on the value, on the data. Uh, we, this has created a playing field for new entrants, uh, like us. Okay, basically, to do things which are not possible before to do, totally impossible. Uh, that's why they thought we were crazy uh, 18 months ago when we started. People, you know, experts from the domain. Uh, it has facilitated also an easy migration. It's, the time is going to be finished where you are in one EMM, you stay 10 years, you need to stay because you have, it's possible to migrate. The time is finished when you choose a device, whichever, and you have to stay there because you, you are with this, uh, you know, Android 4 version of this on this device, you cannot migrate. You should be able to start deploying a fleet, and in the meantime, new device go out, change the devices. Okay, why not? You don't need to be st stuck to, with one devices. So that's the, uh, that's, What's happening? It'll take three, four, five years. Like for the cloud, it has taken like five years to be an evidence for everybody. So it'll take a bit of time. But and then specifically, we are transiting now from Microsoft CE, you know, for the enterprise fleets to uh, Android. It's happening. It's happening when people change their fleet. So let's 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 give uh, four, five years. Uh, and the next one, which can you go down because now we are. Okay. The next one is, uh, yeah, it opens. For me, the, the, the door for new new Android uh, vertical uh, Android only vertical solutions, okay, for as a real alternative to the uh, to the one fits all EMM solution. Very often I say I would compare, you know, like you know, once you had a, a, a Oracle SAP providing everything in the enterprise from CRM to accounting to things. Of course, a big project doesn't always work, you know. Uh, anyway, that you, you know the story. Okay, I'm not going. Some are convinced, some are not convinced. Depends. On, the, on the which side of the barrier you are here. Uh, but then Salesforce arrived and said, we're going to do CRM. Very good, well, SaaS, cloud, etc." cetera. Uh, everybody laughed at, uh, at uh, Benioff and uh, at Salesforce, and they became the leaders in a, in a, in a SaaS, in a CRM. So, one, one. so we believe the same thing will be happening on the EMM side, okay? which we should maybe change the name because EMM is really technical. Nobody knows what it is. Uh, uh, so on the control of uh, management of device, etc. I don't know. We maybe have to find a new name. Uh, same thing will happen, and the very complex solution will slowly be replaced by really a vert business vertical solution, bringing ve business value where uh, for the for aligned to the business processes. Uh, and for this one, there is no need to manage uh, uh, Apple and uh, and uh, and Android because. Of course, if you are in a shop, in a, in a luxury Dior or Cardin shop, of course, or whatever shop, uh, Hugo Boss shop, you're going to have a nice uh, 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 iPhone tablet or iPad iPhone because uh, luxury for customers. Okay, but 90% of the users in industry, manufacturing, uh, career, uh, uh, restaurant, uh, all the other shops will use Android. So Android only, it's good because also we can be fully aligned with what Android is, uh, is, our Android is evolving. Next version, no problem. We are only on Android. It's there immediately. You know, day it comes out, maybe a few weeks later, because my CTO will tell me you are a bit too rough and tell me to do the thing for the day after. So, so but it will be there. We'll be there much quicker than the other ones. So that's why, that's, that's why we are here, and that's why we decided also to go, to go along the way of creating, which seems to be time time a bit crazy for people, a new EMM, EMM in a segment full of uh, very powerful, uh, powerful players today. So uh, before we drop the mic, uh, if you have some questions, we are here for First you. First of all, thank you, too. Thank you for your talk. <laughs> are there any questions? Are you, yeah, will you go? No. I can give you my mic.